Greetings family in the wonderful name of our Lord Yeshua Jesus Christ. I am Daniel Michael and I'm here with my father and we are back with another series called Christ is Better and I hope that throughout this discussion you find answers and hope in the time that we are in. So really what is the context in this discussion that we are having? Thank you, Danny, and greeting to, greetings to all the viewers. It's awesome to be back and um, to engage on this theme, Christ is better. Context. Look, we wake up every day to a reality where there's competing priorities that vie for our attention. We are flooded with so much influence, competing theories that tries to influence our mindset and how we think with the intention of controlling our response to life. But it is also real that we wake up every day in this day and age to people falling. So many fatalities, so many sicknesses, so much pain, and so much confusion all around us. And people are seeking for answers. People are looking for hope. People are looking for something that can give them the assurance that everything is going to be fine. But people are also unsure. The family base is shaken significantly because of the economic circumstances that keep deteriorating because of global events. Uh, people are losing jobs. Unemployment is rife. Businesses are closing down. The fiber of society is affected. So the context from which this discussion is coming is for us as the church to point to kingdom solutions that will help not just in this time to create hope, but also would project us into a future that is sure, a future that is full of peace, a future that is designed by the Father for us. So as we take this conversation, my hope and my desire is that our viewers over there will be able to draw inspiration, will be able to find substance in the Lord Jesus Christ that will strengthen their resilience, and the ability to navigate through where we are now. So how can we hear the voice of God in the time that we are in? The, the voice of God has always been audible throughout generations. And, and this now compels us to look at Hebrews chapter 1. In Hebrews chapter 1, between verse 1 and 4, we find an interesting pointer that helps us to understand that Elohim speaks to the human race. The Bible says here, in times past, in sundry times, God spoke to our predecessors, our fathers, through the prophets. But in these last days, he is talking to us through his son. And I think it's important to make the distinction between the two times or the two dispensations. Sundry times or times past can be equated to the time between Genesis and the dawn of the synoptic gospels. Here we see the Lord speaking in diverse ways. In fact, the Apostle Isaiah puts it in this way. He says, the Lord has been speaking precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Which gives you the impression that the Father has been speaking throughout the Old Testament in different ways and in different forms. So if you look at Genesis as an example, you will hear him speak to Adam right from the beginning. And you go through and you look at the patriarchs, you will hear him speak to the patriarchs. Covenantally, for instance, through Abraham, through Noah, through Moses in the law, but also through uh, David. So, so the Lord has been speaking in diverse ways. He's been speaking through the prophets. And so when we look at the culmination of the message, it finds meaning and purpose in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the question then is, how do we discern the voice of God in our time? He is speaking to us through his son in these last days. The last days being the ascension or the period between the ascension of the Lord Yeshua and his return, which is the time in which we live. In this time, the Father is speaking pointedly, clearly and expressly, through the Lord Yeshua Jesus. So to your question, discerning the voice of God in our time means we have to incline our ear to the Lord Jesus. We have to look at 
the instructions of the Lord Jesus. We have to look at how has he revealed the Father, how has he revealed the kingdom as it is documented in Scripture. Because when we do that, we will be able to hear the voice of the Father through the life, the ministry and times of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the, I, I hear the echo, Christ as being the subby pupa <laughs> of all things. What does that acronym mean? Well, subby pupa is an acronym that I keep reminding myself about as I think about the profile of the Lord Yeshua. So firstly, in the Lord, our Father speaking to us through the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, is doing that because of the distinct divine person, of the Lord Jesus, he is doing that because of the role of the Lord Jesus in creation, he is doing that because of the Lord Jesus' meditatorial role, how he intercedes as mediator between God and man. He does that because the Lord Jesus is so much more superior to the holy angels. So let me, in that context, bring in your question. We then discern the Lord Jesus in the Father speaking to us through the Sabi Pupa. The Sabi Pupa is an acronym which means the Lord Jesus S is the spokesperson of the Father to all human race. If we want to hear the Father, let's listen to Christ. A, he is the appointed heir of all things. In other words, as joined heirs with the Lord Jesus, if we are going to understand our inheritance and what we are preparing for in eternity, it is important to look at the Lord Jesus as the heir of the full estate. B, he is the brightness of the glory of the Father. Now, where we are at, this context that we painted in the beginning, you could coin a dark season. Now, in the dark season of life, in the crises of life, in a time of pandemics, in a time of economic turbulences, it is important that we know that the light that we need is in Christ. Christ is the brightness of the glory of the Father. The glory of the Father is the presence and the weight of the presence of the Father. So we need the Lord Jesus to shine light so that there's hope that is created for where we are. So he's the brightness of the Father. But he's also the image of the invisible Elohim. The Lord Jesus is the visible manifestation of Elohim who cannot be seen. And therefore, if we want to see Elohim at work in our lives, we got to relate to the Lord Yeshua Jesus, who's not just the visible image, he's got the real human experience of what we are going through, and he's got the real divine experience of being God, and therefore from that vantage point, he is able to walk us through um, our everyday experiences as the image of the invisible God. He is the P, which is the planner. Lord Jesus is the planner of all the ages and creation. By that we are saying, because he planned all the ages, he is acquainted with the time and seasons in which we live. The Lord Jesus knows every second of every minute. He knows every minute of every hour, every hour of every day, every day of every week. The Lord Yeshua knows every week of every year and every year of every decade and every decade of every century. He knows every century of every millennium and he knows eternity past and eternity in the future. So if we are going to make sense of the time we are in and interpret this time within the context of how he has designed it, it is important that we get acquainted with him. Let the Lord Yeshua Jesus reveal to us the time we are in and reveal to us the kingdom strategies that we need to adopt in order to navigate through this time. So he is that planner of all the ages. But he is not just the planner, he is the you. He upholds all things that have been created by his powerful word. So if there is a degeneration in society, if there's a degeneration in nature, we would be wise to consult with the Lord Jesus who upholds all things to give us a diagnostic of where things have faltered and how they can be fixed as the upholder of all things. So he's the sabi pu pa. And then P is, he is the high priest of all the human race before the Father. It is him 
who has offered his blood to purge the sins of men. So regardless of where we are, he is the high priest that intercedes between us as the human race and our father. And therefore, the last A is that the Lord Jesus is the ascension and is the exalted, exaltation or exaltedness. Um, the ascension because at some point we are going to be raptured. But what precedes the rapture is the fact that one went in before us, the Lord Jesus Christ, opening that pathway for us to ascend to the Father when he raptures the church. So that is the sabi pupa that the Lord Jesus is. So in essence, he is that profile. He is that ideal person. He is that God-man with the ideal dignity and personality to be able to create hope and lead us through this time and beyond. Sabi pupa. Sabi pupa. <laughs> the inclusive profile of Christ makes him better. Yeah. So much better. Yeah. Um, how, how does this supersede the Old Testament grades? By virtue of his divine person, um, the inclusive profile of the Lord Jesus truly um, exceeds and supersedes the Old Testament grades. Now, the Old Testament grades were anointed some as priests, some were anointed as prophets, some were anointed as kings. But in the Lord Jesus, we find a prophet, a priest, and king in one. The Lord Jesus is that prophet to all the nations. The Lord Jesus is that high priest to the entire human race. The Lord Yeshua Jesus indeed is that king to all the nations and by extension the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And that's what makes him distinct. That's what makes him superior. That's what makes him stand out from all the Old Testament greats. Indeed, the Lord Jesus is so much better. Saints, so there you have it. I hope, <laughs> I hope you have it, and I believe you do. Um, please, please follow us, um, or follow the series, um, as we present Christ as all and only superior in all things. And until um, we meet again next time, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom.